Hey guys, what's up? It's Zell here. Welcome back to another video. Um, so it's been eight months since I posted the last tutorial, but this is going to be the last one and I apologize that it took me so long. I literally just forgot about it um, and no one said anything, so I didn't really care. <laughs> no one was yelling at me to continue. So anyway, welcome back to the tutorials. This is going to be the last video I make because I haven't, that's all, I, this is the last like mechanic that I think really needs explaining. So this is going to be for the free time events. And there's a lot of components that go into the free time events, like programming more than I thought there were going to be. So let me, I, there's probably a better way of doing it than the way I did it, but this is the only way I could figure out how to do it. So it's very convoluted, but I'm going to try my best to explain. So let's start by looking at the character you talk to during a free time event. Normally this switch would, here would be scene zero, like scene 10, free time event one, because there's there's four free time events in chapter one for my game at least there were four four chapter one uh, free time events and normally the switch would be here because that's where Victoria would be during the first free time event event so it's gonna basically just ask do you want to hang out with Victoria like it does in the real like regular game click yes no it when yes um, you spend some time with her and then ask to give you a gift. One no, it just, uh, you just transfer back. Uh, we actually, you just cancel here. When you ask, when it asks to give you a gift, you go yes or no. Um, no just takes you back to the character's room or whatever happens after the free time event is over. Yes goes on with the free time event. So, <laughs> yes, no. Uh, control switches, gift select on, uh, control switches, Victoria free time event on. I have this for every single character. Where is it? Oh, dear lord, I have so many. Okay, so I have this for every single character, a switch that basically it just sh shows that, that this FTE, this free time event is the one that is happening. You'll see why later that's that, that, why that's important. And then gift select, that's important. Basically, it's telling the game you're selecting a gift. So then it goes to common event presence. And I don't know if I explained, I think I explained the menus in a previous uh, tutorial. So it'll go to this common event here. And basically, it just opens up the present menu. And from there, so I only did this for a few, like I didn't do it anything past year, I like didn't do it for, but this is what you would, this is the, what you would normally see if there weren't any free time events and like, there, so it would just be the description of the item so that when you open the menu, not during a free time event, it would just show the description and how many you have. Now, when gift select is on, the game is like, okay, so you're selecting a gift to give to a person. So there's a whole uh, conditional branch that happens when you select the gift. So you select it and then it, there's two branches here, which is uh, if you have, if mineral water, which is a variable that I have, I have a variable for every single item. So that shows how many um, the player has, or it keeps track of how many the, uh, of that gift the player has. If mineral water equals zero, then it just says like you don't have the gift and then goes back to common event presence. So like it just shows the menu again. And then it says if mineral water is more than or equal to one, so you have more, you have one or more, <laughs> then it goes on with the free time events. Uh, and then it says give this gift, there's like another confirmation. You say yes or no, no brings you back to the presence menu. Yes brings you here, change items. I didn't really need to change the items here. It was mostly just the variable I needed to change. So I don't know why I did change items. Also, why is this? Okay, no, that's right. Uh, so then it would subtract one from mineral water, meaning they don't have that gift anymore, or you know, they lost one of that gift. And then it control switches mineral water on. It, it'll it make sense why, again, I have a switch, not just a variable, I have a switch for every single item. So as you can see, I didn't do them for all the items here, but these are the ones that I did do them for. So then it'll, yes, so mineral water on. <laughs> then, the game is going to check basically what character you're talking to. Um, as you can, if you remember earlier, we turned on the switch free time, Victoria free time event. 
on. Uh, we turned that on when we were talking to Victoria and gave her, he said we were gonna give her a gift. So the game is like, okay, so you're talking to Victoria and then it'll go back, go down here <laughs> to Victoria gift responses. I have gift responses for every single character. It's very a tedious process. So Victoria gift responses. This is the annoying part. You have to do this for every single item. Um, so every single item that has you, um, you know, if the switch of the is on, meaning you are giving that present to them. So for this, we're giving mineral water to her. You would show her response to it and then whether or not it continues with the free time event. If they like dislike the gift or hate it, obviously they, you don't continue with the event and you just go back to the room or whatever. But in this case, all these gifts were neutral to Victoria, so she has the same response for them. Now, control switch is free time event on, meaning this is when the free time event actually starts. And then common event, Victoria free time event. And again, with the common events, there is a free time event, a common event for every single character. And this is where you put all of the dialogue for the free time events, like every single rank. As you can see, I split it by rank. I do rank one, rank two, rank three, you know, so, far, so on and so forth. Rank one is if the Victoria free time event variable equals zero. So basically then it just goes through like regular dialogue here. And then at the very end here, it flashes the screen. This is just a little like visual stuff. It flashes the screen, shows the friendship fragments here that you got one of them. And then it just says that. And then here we go. So control variables, Victoria free time event plus one. So now her free time event variable is equal to one. So that the next time you do her free time event, it goes to this conditional branch, which is rank two. So yeah, if it equals one, it goes to two. If it equals two, uh, if it equals two, it goes to three, which is confusing, but that's how it works. Basically, this is a counter for which free time event you're at. So again, like I said, there's four free time events in chapter one. This is the first one, or this would be the first one, but that doesn't matter because this basically is saying that it, it would add to that. Normally, there would be a conditional branch here telling you which chapter it is. So conditional branch, say there's six, like six chapters or whatever, there would be another conditional branch that's saying like switch, uh, chapter one is on, right? Okay, so let's say that that's on, and then this would be in there, um, this would be there, and then he would have to do it for every single chapter. But since I only did chapter one, I, I just put this here anyway, so that, because it wouldn't matter regardless. <laughs> But if you have more than one chapter, keep that in mind. If I, if I, I don't know if I explained that correctly. If I didn't, I'll try to explain it better in the comments. Just ask. Um, okay. Then it goes to another common event called free time event check. And then it goes here. And then it's just showing if, depending on which free time event it is in the chapter, it will go to that free time event. So exactly. So see here, I have free time event one and free time event two and free time event three and blah, 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 blah. And then you go back, it goes back to the main character's room every time. This is just so that like, for me, when I have, when I have the, how I have the game like written out, there's a different, there's a bunch of different scenes obviously here. And then the switch, there's different switches for every single scene. So this post defeat and then freedom event one and the free time event two, and then another cut scene and then more cut scenes and then, then free time event three and four and then more cut scenes, blah, 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 blah. So that's why I have it like, it looks like this, because that's just basically progressing the story. Now, the other important part of this is exit event processing. I had a major issue where since this um, is right after you, since the this variable or like rank two comes right after you add to the variable, it would just go and play this one or go and um, play this conditional branch even though you are you even though you by that point you've technically switched over here but it doesn't know that so it keeps playing the event as normal but if you do exit event processing at the very end here it cuts everything and stops going 
so it won't go to the next rank. Um, I had a big issue with that. I didn't know what to do. Uh, so if that happens, make, keep, make sure you do exit event processing at the end of this. So I think that's actually covers everything. I don't think I ever went over the mono mono machine. So I'm going to do that really quickly because it's a really simple thing. So basically there's a whole new map here called with the mono mono machine, which is basically just an entire UI. It's the same thing I did for the um, class trial kind of. Uh, this obviously is a placeholder. This isn't what it was actually going to look like. Um, this is a random empty event here. I don't know what that is. This just brings you back. So that would be like the exit thing. Basically, where's the price counter? When you interact with this, it just... This is a placeholder or two, but it would be like a, a picture of a Monomar machine. And then it would transfer you to this map, which is the Mono Mono machine. And then you click insert coin. And depending on how much gold uh, mono coins you have, it'll say like you have enough or you don't have enough. So less than or equal to zero, <laughs> uh, not enough coins. I don't know why it's less than, it should just be less like equal to zero, but whatever, uh, not enough coins. And then if you have more than or equal to one, then it keeps going. This is like a random thing, basically. Um, I have a variable here, which is gifts, so it can be named, you know, named whatever, and then set random, and then one through however many items you have. I only had nine here, like in the actual like event, so I only did nine, but obviously like there's like hundreds in the game or whatever, like a lot, there's tons of them, so you would want to make it so that it's a variable, There's uh, it goes to however many items you have, and then it'll be if gifts if this variable that is random uh is if it equals one then you get the first gift which is the mineral water if it equals two you get apple juice if you if it equals three you get camel uh you know so since this is a random variable it would be random depending on it's gonna it's basically picks a random number for from through one from one through nine and then it goes there so say it's randomly picks four then you get zero dine soda <laughs> Um, you know, stuff like that. Now, you might be wondering, oh, but what about, and then also minus gold, and then you get, you add a variable to the mineral water, and then play the sound, and then the animation, and I have a common event for the gift animation. I'll show that in a second. You might be wondering, oh, what about the whole mechanic where, like, you put more coins in, and you get a higher chance of getting a new item? I didn't do that, because that would be a whole lot more complicated than just the random variable it's annoying and not as good for the player <laughs> but there you go that is what it is so i there's a picture for every single gift here as you can see so i had one for every single gift and i would just sort of move it so that it looks like it's like popping in and so that would be it and i believe that's all for the explanation of the free time events and this is took way less longer than i expected it to if you have any questions, as always, leave them in the comments and I'll try my best to answer them. This is the last video in the series of my tutorials because I don't have anything else to teach you guys. Uh, I think this is like everything, basically. Um, I might make a, if anyone would be interested in a blog format of this, so it's like not a video, it's a, uh, basically like documentation of how to do this, let me know and I will make that. Um, Otherwise, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you all in the next video. Goodbye!